it's a common it's a commonality in South Africa. If you don't have an H or a, a, M E A, then you're a Megan. But I will refer to myself as Megan, but you're more than welcome to I will call you Megan. Whatever. I just realized that I was assuming that you were Megan. <laughs> I know. And, uh, you know, I actually, I often think to just put a little cup of key there and like say, put an A just as a joke, but uh, it's it's okay. People get to know, get to know me as Meg. So cool. Okay. So welcome to the Marketing Lifelines Friendly Fridays, Colleen. And thank you so much for, for joining, uh, joining us. Um, this is where thank we you for like, the invite, Megan. It's a pleasure. And this is where we like to share with like-minded people and to share and share alike. And today, so we have Colleen Quist from CQ Associates. And today we're going to be talking a little bit differently, you know, off, slightly off the topic of marketing, but essentially marketing helps you to build your brand and your business. And um, Colleen's going to be talking about personal development in building your business. So something a little bit different, which I thought is quite nice as well, as it's just as important. So let me just do a quick bio intro to introduce Colleen to everybody. Colleen is a Commencer Credential Master Coach, um, CMP, Listen, Believe, Implement, Grow. Colleen has more than 30 years experience of working in and with organizations and focusing on growing people and in turn the organizations. She creates a space for people to be um, vulnerable and to feel non-judged as they come to terms with change, connection, managing their stress, achieving big goals, and finding the meaning in their lives. Colleen is also director of CQ Associates, which includes the consulting arm of her business, the Pink Diamond Club, discussing parenting, and more recently, 44. Colleen serves on various boards as well, and committees in a coaching, mentoring, healthcare, sales, and environment space. Sure, and you have time to do all of this and run your own business. <laughs> it's called juggle. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, I think there are enough hours in each day. They've just got to be prioritised. That's all. <laughs> good. Good point. And I guess it also comes with age and experience. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So, so just tell us a little bit about yourself, Colleen, and yeah, how you landed up being where you are today. Okay, so thanks, Megan. Um, I wanted originally in the olden days to be a doctor, didn't get into medical school, so ended up going to do the BSc route, um, went to Wits, and then from there did biochemistry and genetics. And then along the way, didn't still didn't get into medical school, so I thought, oh, well, new journey, new plan. Um, I went and studied genetics, human genetics, with the idea of doing genetic counseling, except the government stopped training. And so I thought, oh, okay, so crossroads, a lot of self-reflection. I didn't enjoy uh, research. I don't enjoy research on animals. I don't enjoy talking to test tubes. So I said, well, goodbye, I'm out of here. <laughs> and I went off to join the sales world. And then from sales world, still in, in medical devices. So I worked eventually in uh, 10 different disciplines. So urology, gastroenterology, women's health, fertility, vascular, all different things like that. Um, I started off as a rep, became a um, product specialist, product manager, clinical specialist, and was eventually a divisional manager. And then um, after I'd been in the industry for 22 years, I thought, okay, it's time for a change, time to go do something else. And very much I've always focused on growing people and realizing that the more you grow people, the more you grow a business because businesses aren't inanimate, they're made up of people. Um, and so from there went off and started my own business, I realized you can't just transition across mountains from one from one perspective to the other, you've got to go and learn new skills. Um, funny things like no phones don't just ring, you have to go and do the sales. So in order to coach, you have to go and um, bring clients in. Yeah. So um, yeah, and that's where I am now have obviously grown as a coach coaching is almost like becoming and became a master coach along the way. I am credentialed with Commencer as a master coach Commence is the professional body for coaches and mentors. And yeah, when you look back from 2012, it's well to 2012 and from 2012 to now has been lots of years, lots of growth, lots of um, obstacles that had to be overcome. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and lots of growing of me. 
yeah absolutely sure so that's one one journey and a half from from going into medicine and then still kind of following that path into sales which i think is kind of always is a kind of fall back on but i think it's a great journey to have because it kind of gives us that confidence that we're going to use going forward as you say in life so not a bad thing to spend a bit of time in sales um, so then tell us then a little bit about the CQ Associates and, and what is your real purpose? I mean, I'm sure you also have a why and um, along your journey, this has come true and, and it, it been exposed. So how and what is your purpose at CQ Associates? So my purpose has always been to heal and also to, um, to teach. And so as a doctor, it was obviously going to be heal and teach, but uh, in, in medical devices, it was heal and teach. And obviously, as a coach facilitator, it's heal and teach. It's just got different words in terms of coaching, facilitating, empowering. Um, my, my purpose has always been to make sure that people live their potential, that they don't settle for blah and average, and that they don't settle for, oh, let's just be the same. So it is about our uniqueness. And when you have people in an organization who all bring their uniqueness, know the value they, they um, contribute, you know what kind of company you can then um, get as a result of that. Yes, yeah. I like that. Heal and teach. That's so powerful. And <laughs> Heal and like, teach. Yes. When, you know, when, you, when people look at their purpose and they go, oh, well, so you've changed your purpose. No, ultimately, I haven't changed my purpose, but how we deliver on the purpose is different. packaged it differently. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. So then in terms of the brands in CQ Associates, there's CQ Consulting is where I started. So although, yes, we started in consulting, it's actually um, the coaching, mentoring, facilitating, speaking. I've always said I'm a coach who speaks as opposed to a speaker. Okay. Um, so that works in that section. We work with organizations. We put together, um, you know, plans with people to meet their needs. So I'm not a copy paste kind of cookie cutter, you know, let's do page one. It's what do you need? Then in um, discussing parenting, that is started with my daughter. My daughter's 23 and we've had a very different parent relationship. So it's almost like, okay, let's have videos where we discuss various aspects of parenting or being parented. Um, and then we, you know, we have workshops for parents, for instance, and also the videos to help people, not necessarily saying that we know how it should be done, but just saying this is our perspective. Yes. Then we have um, the Pink Diamond Club, so that started off in in terms of having empowering women but without squashing men and now seeing more that we need a platform to be able to bring our uniqueness mm -hmm. and when we talk about inclusivity it's pointless that oh i didn't feel included i only was included if i fitted into whatever the norm was over there okay a big thing i feel that we don't we don't learn about um each other if we've all got to pretend we're the same yeah absolutely so yes and then there's 44 44 is run by my daughter jess and she makes um developmental videos different insights into different things and is also a coach okay so let's talk a little bit about personal development because obviously we focus on the marketing side more on kind of the brand development and taking the market into account and getting all that right and you know really taking that to market as a full package um, but how does the personal development side kind of impact this and where does that then play a role so when we're growing a company we are only able to grow a company at the level that we have grown to so often it's you know like when i look back on my life and i see that the opportunities i get now why didn't i get them then it's because I hadn't grown to a level to be able to see them or to be able to accept them or for them to be attracted to me vibrationally. Um, and so personal growth is very important, you know, not only as the owner of a company, for instance, but as individuals, because the more you grow, the more you can see, the more opportunities there are. And also the easier it is because companies aren't just um, inanimate, as I said, yes. they are made up of people. So you can only go as far as the people have been or have achieved or grown. Yeah. 
So, and then in terms of the, the you mentioned um, when we were chatting previously, there's four key parts to personal development. Do you want to maybe just touch touch on those for us? Okay. So when you look at people um, being able to work with others, okay, that's really what we're doing in a company. So in order to have social skills, to be able to go out there to communicate, the areas of emotional intelligence that you really need are self-awareness, self-regulation, um, internal motivation to get you up, to drive you, all that kind of thing, and also empathy. So when you look at those first three pillars, they're all about I self-awareness who am i what makes me tick am i emotionally literate do i know how i'm feeling um do i join in in self-regulation do i tell myself a story about why you did something to me and i've connected dots that are there um yeah that isn't the truth but it's my perception and then internal motivation is also you know what are your values what drives you what is getting you up um, and then once you've done the I, you're then able to see other people as the you. So the empathy and not sympathy. How do I empower other people? How do I understand what they're going through without taking it away from them and saying, oh, I can do this better than you. And only then when you've got an I and a you, can we then get a we. And I, and I mean, this obviously works for both one man businesses to large companies and corporates. Yes. Alike. Okay. Yeah. So in, in entrepreneurs, for instance, we're so busy running out the door to go, oh, get the business, do this, where's your invoice, here's your whatever, as opposed to saying, have we grown personally? Have we sat down and done the self-reflection? Have we done the um, awareness of who we are without the judgment? Mm -hmm. But so when you get to the bigger company, you then realize that you didn't put the foundation in. Yes. And you don't have a foundation to tweak and grow and keep on going from there. But then also in terms of self-awareness, it's not only, okay, who am I? It's what aspects of my life are working. So when, as entrepreneurs, for instance, when you're going there, how many hours are you putting into your business? How many hours are you putting into your family, your spiritual life, your physical life, your emotional life, your mental life, your environmental life? Mm. Um, and because there aren't more hours in a day, it's got to come from each, from each part of those. And are you compromising too much in that, you know, you're going to have an amazing business, but no family yeah, yeah. or no physical life. When last did you get any exercise or any movement? Yes. Yeah. I think I can definitely resonate with self-regulation because I think that's something that, you know, one can be aware of the things we're not doing, but um, to actually yes. take action and do and implement, um, you know, day-to-day -day activities as we should for, for motivation and obviously consistency yes. so um and then so how how does this all come together you know alongside kind of the marketing plans and having the accounting systems and the integration and all these awesome things in place how how does it help in building a business having having identified with one's personal development and optimizing that in that is, is like when because i'm a business coach as well as a life coach okay. so when you walk into an organization whether that's a huge big business or it's an entrepreneurial solopreneur it's also about saying okay we want to make uh, uh, 20 million we want to make 20 million okay well show me the people because people make people make the 20 million okay also with that is is that show me the processes but people put processes in People uphold processes. Hmm. People go, oh, no, we don't do that. Um, and what often happens is you have processes in your business, but no one ever does them. Often what happens in a solopreneur point of view is you don't put the processes in. You run out and juggle because there's so many hats to change. So the big thing with that is, is how does it all work together? Is, is that none of it works without the people side. And none of it works if we're not growing the people. So you can have the, the most amazing marketing plan in the world that brings in clients, attracts them. But if you don't have the person who answers the phone and says hello and is friendly because they're grumpy from yesterday, well, then um, it's not going to work. Yeah. OK, so you so in terms of people processes um, and profits, as I would say, then you kind of you you kind of fit in the people space is getting the kind of rights, um, emotional side, um, attitude, you know, 
perhaps adopting them to the company's why or vision or mission, whatever it may be. And that's whether it's on a one-on-one -on -one basis or a group basis, that's what you where you focus on and grow people in that space. So the big thing there, Megan, is, is that people come to work for different reasons. Yeah, definitely. And then the, the company also exists for a different reason. So exactly as you said, our whys, we've all got different whys. If we don't align our whys and I don't see my part in your why, well then, so we yeah, all work exactly. very hard, but in opposite directions. Yeah. So the what is also important is the communication. Sometimes people think they're communicating, they're sharing, they're doing, you know, um, especially when you run a business and you've got to change hats and run from one to the other. And then you think you've told or you think the people understand or that's also validation, recognition. Um, did we go, yay, look what we've achieved. Yeah. So there's a lot of noise. A lot of people work in their business instead of on it because of having to change hats. Mm -hmm. But when you work with a coach, for instance, you're then taking yourself out of the the chaos mm. to be able to look back into your business to say what's working, what's not working, how's, you know, what can be improved, what can be better. Because even if it works brilliantly today, doesn't mean it will in a month. Mm. No, I think, um, you know, in terms of people, that's a big factor, you know, the motivation side, you know, as I also say, from a touch point point of view, you can spend money on a campaign and you can have the perfect message, you can get the right people. And then, like you say, someone will pick up the phone, either they haven't been briefed on what the message should be, or they're having a bad day, or they're hating their life and their job. And that's obviously a representation of your brand. So very much important. But processes, I think, is a big thing for most businesses is the consistency and managing that across the different divisions, which essentially then, like I said, lends itself to profit. So I think um, in terms of where we could fit well together is people, because that is what I talk about inside out marketing as well. Building the business inside just as much as we're building it on the outside because unfortunately not everyone's going to buy into everything that you say. So get the buy in, communicate, internal communication and then filter that out. So very, very important. Awesome. When you yeah. have external marketing and you have internal marketing and they're different messages about, oh, company X is the most amazing, wow, and you're talking to your customer base. Yes. But if your employees don't believe that, or you don't believe it either, you know, like we are friendly, we are accommodating, we look after you and you go, mm, okay. So it starts with employees. If they aren't your biggest fans, well, then they're not gonna treat your customers well. Yeah, no, absolutely. So a lot of companies have got the, the public image of, oh, this is us. And then when you go inside, you go, mm, not really. <laughs> Yes. Absolutely. So the, the less gap there is between the external and the internal, the better the company. It also makes it an authentic place to work. Yeah. That has meaning and purpose. And um, yeah, it's it's then driven that we're all working in the same direction. Yeah, I think one one person that comes to mind with that is Richard Branson. You know, if you think about anything and everything he's done in all his ventures, it's always been about the in, inside of the company before focusing on the outside where I think a lot of companies tend to do it the other way around because it seems to make sense but absolutely 100% um, agree with you inside out is the way to go and I think the larger your organization is the easier it is to forget about that because yeah that's been awesome thank you so much Colleen for sharing with me today on this rather miserable day in South Africa today I don't know if it's raining where you are but um Unusual weather for a, an autumn day, but I need the, needless to say, we'll still enjoy it. Um, it's nothing better than a little bit of rain before the dry seasons are coming up. So just thanks again to you and sharing with us, um, taking out your time. We really, really appreciate it. And then, sure. thank you. And then next week, we'll be talking about enhancing your brand with design. Um, same time, 12 o'clock at um, a Friday next week on Friendly Fridays with the Marketing Lifeline. Thanks for tuning in and please feel free to share if you enjoyed our interview today and if you know of anyone that could learn from this conversation about how important it is about people development to get your business to evolve and grow. Um, and most importantly, to focus on the inside as much as you're focusing on, on getting your messages on the outside remember to turn that inwards to your business and to grow your internal employees as well. So thanks everybody. And then I shall see you again. Till next time. Cheers.
Thanks. Thanks, Colleen. Sorry about